what's up Giants fans, hub watchers, YouTube subscribers, Twitter and Instagram followers. It's your boy No Name back at it again with another New York Giants video. I hope you guys are doing well, everything is okay with y'all. Uh, I hope that you guys are staying safe, you know, taking all the precautions you may need in today's crazy world to try and live uh, the most normal life possible. Um, first and foremost, thank you to everybody that tuned into the live stream last night, the Young Guns podcast. I don't even know what episode it was on, but it was another great show with myself and Kid Blue. Got a little bit of wonky towards the end, but in general, it was still fun for all of us. I thank you all for tuning in. And I will implore you guys to go check out the video that I put out right after that podcast. Since it was late in the night, it was like 11.30 you know, or 12 o'clock in the night when I released my top five running backs in the NFL video. Um, not a lot of you do that. I actually went out. So I, I do say go check it out. You may be surprised by how some of the rankings go and whatnot. But definitely go check out that video. It's one of my better edited videos. I think you guys will like it. And it's the first in a new series I'm starting, the NFL 2020 Primer Series, where I'm going to be doing general NFL videos until the season starts. So with those announcements out of the way, you know, subscribe if you're new, like the video, share it everywhere. Let's get into some Giants news right here. And the first things first that I got to address um, is PFF, right? So PFF, you guys already know my opinion on them. Uh, let me restate it real quick. I said this in, I think, their top 50 players list where they left Saquon off of it. I said, I respect what PFF does. I just don't like them. I respect what they do because they do something that I can never do and that a lot of people can't do. They literally go through every single play of every single player on every single team in the NFL to to gather information, gather stats, gather data, whatever the case may be, but to gather information on every player in the league, every team in the league, everything like that. And that's like hours and hours, thousands and thousands of hours upon hours of the day that I simply don't have, but they have the time to do that and they do it and they do a good, a pretty good job of gathering information. Where I don't like PFF and where in my opinion they mess up is interpreting that information. We've seen it a bunch of times, the biggest example of recent memory would be leaving Saquon Barkley and for that matter Ezekiel Elliott off of the top 50 players list and Derrick Henry but putting Nick Chubb and Christian McCaffrey on there. If Nick Chubb makes the list, Saquon, Ezekiel Elliott and Derrick Henry should make the list. That's just my opinion. Um, that's just one of the many examples of PFF using the good information that they have because they have data and statistics that Pro Football Reference, which I think is the official, you know, like the official basically stat book of the NFL. Um, they have information that even those guys don't have. So, I mean, once again, I respect them. Where I, where, you know, I kind of fall apart with them is when they interpret that information and they just, they just be, they just wrong sometimes, you know what I mean? And let's get into this one. This is from Giants Wire. It says, PFF ranks the Giants 2020 roster among the worst in the NFL. This is an article by John Finelli. I don't know. And it was published just 28 minutes ago. So it's relatively fresh. And before I actually get into the article, just based off of the title, I will I will say this. I can't blame PFF or any media experts or anybody for that matter to have Gi the Giants ranked as one of the worst rosters in the NFL going into the season just based off of recent history. Now, we're, we're at 12 and 36 over the past three years. We've only won 12 games. We won, what was it, three in 2017, five in uh, 2018. And then four in 2019. Yeah, that's 12 and 36. That And that is the worst record in the NFL over the past three years. It is the worst record the past three years. So it would kind of lead to the assumption that we are one of the worst rosters. And then just outside of that fact, going into the season, there's quite a few teams that are better than the Giants right now. Now, I have hope for us. You guys notice in several of my vids, I've said I think we could have a top 10 offense if everything breaks right and even if everything doesn't break right I think our offense is gonna be top 15 no matter what so unless at least on the offensive side the football we're gonna be one of the better teams the defense is definitely where we need to improve I need to see a bit more from the defense before I have my confidence fully in them I think we're gonna be in the you know high teens low 20s when it comes to defense but you add that together and we're definitely gonna be maybe um, either an average or below average team in the NFL this year uh, I wouldn't say necessarily one of the worst, you know, one of the worst leads me to believe low 20s, but I can't exactly blame them right off the bat for going that way. So let's actually get into the article, right? So I'm just going to read through the article here. It says the general consensus regarding the New York Giants roster among NFL experts is that it's not up to snuff. 
12 wins in the last three years support the theory that under general manager Dave Gelman, the Giants have not gotten better since he took the team over in December 2017. Using Pro Football's Focus's grading system, the folks at ESPN.com have rated the Giants roster number 27 overall in the NFL headed into the 2020 season. That is about right given their recent performance on and off the field. Yeah, like I said, you know, talking about um, this guy here, what's his name again? John, he mentioned the fact that we're, you know, 12 and 36 over the past three years and whatnot. I, so far, so good. I agree with him. PFF lists the Giants' biggest strength as their defensive front, which Gellman has prided himself on building the past three seasons. And then he gives a quote directly from PFF and it says, Leonard Williams, Dexter Lawrence, Dalvin Thompson, and BJ Hill all finished with well above average run defense grades at the interior defender position. If you move back to the linebacker position, David Mayo, the potential starter alongside Blake Martinez, ended the 2019 season with a PFF run defense grade of 90.1. Teams are going to have trouble running up the middle against the Giants, which is something I would pride myself on as well. When you got Ezekiel Elliott, Miles Sanders, and you know a good running back group over there in Washington, you're going to want to build up the run defense and the NFC in general. Um, the NFC is a more run-heavy conference than the AFC. The AFC is where you see the quarterback-heavy, you know, deep pass-heavy offenses. The NFC is a lot more run-heavy than people realize that it is. So I would pride myself on that too. And I do agree with PFF here. I think it is the biggest, you know, strength in our defense. So the article continues saying, That is likely true as is PFF's ass assessment of the Giants' biggest weakness, edge rusher. Which, yeah, I think that's definitely our biggest weakness. I was trying to think I'm like the secondary... It's not proven yet, but we have a lot of bodies back there, a lot of potential. Linebacking core was definitely improved. Defensive front, yep. Uh, it's going to be edge rusher for sure. Incoming defensive coordinator Patrick Graham will attempt to get creative with the pass rush, but the real hope is with strategic blitzes and covered sacks. The Giants can make up for not having a feared edge rusher. Kyler Frackwell replaces Marcus Golden in the lineup next season, but his career high in pressures is just 27 in 2017. O'Shane Zimenez and Lorenzo Carter figure to compete for the other starting defender job. In their three combined seasons, the highest PFF pass rushing game between them is 62.3. With a run defense, with a run first defensive line, New York projects to have one of the worst pass rushes in the NFL. Which, um, part of me agrees with, part of me doesn't. The part of me that strongly agrees with it is gonna go with you know recent history and what we've seen in the past. As of right now, with Marcus Golden off the team, we're going to have a pretty weak pass rush because with him on the team last year and with um, 10 sacks from Golden, we were still 22nd in the league when it came to pass rushing numbers and, you know, just producing from that part of the defense. Him off the team is definitely going to decrease that, which is going to put us even lower than 22. But then there's the part of me that disagrees with it is the fact that I'm not sure how we're going to use guys like Jabril Peppers and Xavier McKinney and maybe even other secondary guys to get sacks that are probably not being considered here. You know, and I, I don't like to say Patriots way too much, but you look at how the Patriots have done it in recent years. They don't necessarily need that number one edge rusher. And, I, you know, that a part of me is saying maybe we, they should consider the fact that the Giants will try to get some type of pressures or sack numbers from elsewhere. But without Marcus Golden on the team as of right now, it is pretty logical to assume that it's going to be worse than last year and probably one of the worst in the league. The article continues saying, but the Giants' success hinges on the maturation of their second-year quarterback, Daniel Jones. He is PFF's X-Factor for the Giants' season. And another PFF quote here, the high-end level play from quarterback Daniel Jones is what has drawn people in. And it does provide reason for cautious optimism, the analyst reads. Or the an analysis reads. His carelessness with the football last season has to be acknowledged though. Jones' 31 turnover-worthy turnover plays, uh, plays that should have resulted in turnovers, whether they actually did or not, ranked as first most in the NFL. Fourth most in the NFL. Jones's imperviousness to pressure produces some spectacular plays, but also leads to some of those unnecessary sacks and mistakes. Now, this is one of those stats from PFF where it's like, I'm not sure if I should take it too seriously or I should put a lot of weight into it because how do you really judge that? You know, you're talking about turnover worthy plays like some of them for sure can be uh, you could label as that. Like, for example, I'm just going to throw out an, ex an example that came to my mind here. The throw that Eli made um, right before the David Tyree catch in the Super Bowl 42 was supposed to be a pick 
but I forgot who the Patriots defender was, dropped it. I guess that's a turnover worthy play. But then it's like, there's other plays that they could be counting that we wouldn't consider a turnover worthy play. Maybe, I don't know, just a random thought. DJ slipped while throwing the ball or something and it almost ended up in the hands of the defender or a Giants receiver couldn't, you know, put his hand safely around the ball and they almost fumbled it or something. Like, what, is, what even is that stat? You know what I mean? Like, what... <laughs> What would you use that stat for? That's that's one of those stats where I'm like, I don't know if it's necessarily something you should put a lot of weight into, but we all know as Giants fans, DJ does have to fix his turnover issues when it, in regards to fumbling. And the article ends off with, incoming offensive coordinator Jason Garrett will aim to structure Jones and point him in the right direction for success this season. Jones must learn when to hold him and when to fold him, so to speak, and not to take so many chances with the football. <laughs> exactly. like exactly what i just said um if there's one thing that we all know jones needs to improve upon it's definitely going to be holding on to the football and knowing when to get rid of it and when not to take a sack and all that and so overall i mean at least the way this article is painting what pff has said it's pretty fair in my opinion i mean we have to look at the facts when it comes to how the giants have been in recent memory how they have been you know just this past season and seasons before I definitely think we're gonna be better than last year. I, I think the offense has improved a lot and the defense has the potential to improve. Uh, necessarily one of the worst teams in the league, I don't know about that. I guess it would depend on your definition. I would define one of the worst teams in the league, you know, ranked 25 to 32. I think we're gonna be better 25 than 32. Um, like I said, my season prediction was seven and nine, six and 10 being very possible. That puts us right between 15 and 25 i know that's a large range in terms you know when um you know when you're ranking the teams by a number of wins um maybe we're gonna be right smack down in the middle at 20 and that's not one of the worst teams in the league that's a below average team in the league but that's just my opinion on it let me know what you guys think a quick you know kind of giants update ish video um pff out here are they wilding again or are they actually kind of being fair let me know what you think and i'm out Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and share. I'll catch y'all in the next one.